all right guys so welcome back to the channel i got some footage about an issue i have with my rv that's been the story of my life these last six months living in my rv like i've just had nothing but problems but nevertheless i had some issues with some of the things inside of my rv in terms of power working so if you don't know i have a 44 fifth wheel and typically with 50 amp you have a 120 volt system and a 12 volt system a lot of your big items like uh, your televisions, your microwaves, your AC units would need that in order to work. And of course, if you want to plug something into an outlet, that's something else that would need to be used for that 120 volt. Now, you, the 12 volt system is basically your batteries. I have a dual battery setup. I did a video on that in the past. Be sure to check it out. But that's going to basically help with your lights, pushing in your slides, things like that. You really can't use an RV without the 12 volt system because there are a few things in here that do need that 12 volt power, it's like your, your refrigerator still needs it. Even your AC units, which some people think they only run off 120 volt, they still need a little bit of 12 volt power to run. So with that being said, my issue was not with what you would expect. And that's why this video is kind of important. Number one, everyone will tell you to go to your breaker box. Make sure you don't have something um, tripped and just make sure everything's good to go in there. You do have a side in there also for your 12 volt power too. Now I, I have to stop right here because I don't wanna run into my, uh, the footage that I have that I'm gonna use here. So I'm gonna start off talking to you about the other issue that people would have, which is the GFCI. And I did check that. So let's get to the footage now. But here's my problem. None of my breakers are tripped and my GFCI is not tripped either. So here's the problem i'm having and no one else has had this problem online and i'm going to show you something because i'm sure someone will have this problem in the future so here is the back of my 50 amp cover this is the cover for it now i don't know why the manufacturers do dumb things like they do some pretty dumb things and i, I will call them out 100 percent because they know they're dumb so all you have to do is just take out the four screws. You see the holes there. There's four screws, you pull them out. Now, if you flip it over, you will also see that there's these little holes here. So when I went to go pull this off, I noticed that they had these screws screwed into the back of the plug, the actual plug. This is the cover. And then there's a plug outside. I'll show you guys what it looks like. And for some weird reason, all the screws are out of the plug. Now, I'm very gentle with this. I'm very gentle with a few other items on my RV because these are sacred things. Like, you have to be careful when you pull your valves on your dump, like for your black tank, for your gray tanks. I'm very, 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 very cautious on how much pressure I put on those things. I'm very cautious on how I plug this in. Now, with that being said, I wanna make this clear. I'm very, very careful because I do not want something to break here. And even with me being as careful as I can be, all my screws have just ran out of the back of this thing. So this was my problem, guys. So what happens is when you go to plug in the RV, the plug that sits inside of here was pushing inside, right? So because it was pushing inside, it wasn't getting a good connection. So even though I was plugged in, like I had power, it was power going to my microwave, power was going to a few other things inside the RV. Some of the plugs were working. Um, of course, you know, again, you have a 12 volt system. So your furnace runs off of that. You can run off um, your, your refrigerator off of that 12 volt system because you have propane and you have a 12 volt trickle. Something inside of here uses 12 volt. So yeah. And sometimes even your AC units will use a small portion of 12 volt power too. So with that being said, if you are having issues with your RV uh, power source, you check, you check the plug, you check the receptacle outside, you also checked the breaker box, you also checked the power plug inside of the bathroom, or if you have a inverter inside of your basement area, you should check that, that breaker everything's on there may be an issue with the plug so i never knew that so even if this is not all the way plugged in you will still have power going to your rv so it will confuse the crap out of you the only things that were not working inside the rv was my 
uh, fireplace, these plugs, and up here, my TV wasn't working. And then the plugs on my side of the bed were not working. I actually, the plugs inside the um, closet weren't working either, right? Right now? Or? Well, no, they weren't working when... They were. Okay. So, yeah. So, that was the only areas that... So, our entire bedroom power went out. This power plug went out. And then just the fireplace. That's it. So, I don't understand how it would still work even though it's not fully plugged in. So, what I have to do... I have to find one more screw here, guys. I have to find one more screw. And I'm going to reach... I'm probably going to use new holes just because I want to get a good tight fit. Now the problem you're going to have is you don't have a lot of space here. So you've got to be really, really, really careful on how you do this. This was a bad design. I don't know why they did this. Um, I don't know. It's just, I just don't understand RV manufacturer. They just do some very stupid stuff. And this was by far dumb. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I said, I got to find one more screw because only two fell out. And then from there, I should have a nice tight fit when I go to plug in my power plug. So I hope this was helpful. This was something that had me trump for a few days. I was like, I don't want to call someone to do something because I still have power inside my RV. So what could it be? It's not the normal stuff that you have to look for. It was actually that I still had a little bit of power coming into the RV, except it wasn't fully pushed in. Now, they do have something online I'm going to show it to you at the end of this video that you can upgrade your RV with. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to spend any more money on this RV. I'm done spending money with this thing. So on our next RV, I'm going to replace this twist thing with the thing I'm going to show you online here. So let me show you a few more things and then that will effectively end this video. Something to consider is you're going to need a short uh, Phillips head screwdriver to be able to get those screws back into the back of this cover here. So just keep that in mind, okay? All right guys, so as you see, it's all fixed. And yeah, it's gonna happen again because even though I don't force my plug in there, it's just over time, you know, with just stress on that plug, it's gonna come undone. I'm, I'm probably gonna buy something. And again, I'm gonna show you guys an upgrade that you can do, but there's probably something I may purchase uh, that might make life a little bit easier and it may take some stress off of that you know off that connection too so i'm gonna show it to you guys right now all righty so i'm on eTrailer.com and they have what's called the smart plug and this is what i was referencing in the video so as you can see you would replace what's on your rv currently and and basically this would plug into it and you don't have to twist it it looks like it puts a little bit less stress on the overall connection here the only thing I would like to see is maybe like a 90 degree uh, angle for the plug just to take a little bit of stress off everything. But overall, this seems to be a good solution because it just plugs in. You have a button that you would release it if you need to uh, pull it out. It looks like it has two areas that you have to squeeze on it and that's it. So it should work better overall. And if you are planning on full timing, this might be a good upgrade for you. Now, if you're like me, you don't want to spend $220. Camco does have a 50 amp locking male and a 90 degree female power grip. So this is like a dog bone as they call it. And this is probably the best answer if you're on a budget. So for $62.20, this is probably what I'm going to do. I looked at this a few months ago. I believe it was 75 or 80 bucks in that ballpark there. So it has gone down in price. And I think that this is a great solution because you have that 90 degree uh, turn there, as I mentioned. So it should take a little bit of stress off and it'll be easier to really plug this in versus that big heavy cord. So I think that this is the option I'm gonna go with. So be sure in the comment section below to let me know what you use or if you have any other good ideas.
Now let's get back to the video. But hey guys, on that note, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.